The Republican Party is continuing its dramatic embrace of authoritarian politics. From unfounded claims of rigged elections to coup attempts, you can run through a list of authoritarian tendencies, and the current GOP yeah, hits pretty much all of them. You don't even have to go back very far to find a decent list of authoritarian grievances. There's Donald Trump telling Dr. Oz to just declare himself the victor in Pennsylvania's Republican state primary, Republican Senate primary, excuse me, before a likely recount because it would be much harder for them to cheat. And then there's this alarming interview Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson did with NBC News on Thursday. The president himself had called on me to be arrested and tried for treason, potentially executed. To hear that the president of the United States, when he loses the election in Michigan, mm -hmm. decides that the way to deal with that is to accuse you of treason, to, to, to ask, to, isn't there some way to arrest her? We should stop expecting that there is a bottom to the lengths that people will go to overturn legitimate election results and seize power in our country. When reached for comment, Trump's spokesman said, I have it on good authority that Secretary Benson knowingly lied throughout her interview with NBC News. None of this is normal. None of this is sane. You know, there was a day when being called an autocrat or being associated with authoritarianism was something American political figures would run away from. But Trump, he changed all of that. And now it's something certain Republicans seem to be getting quite comfortable embracing. So comfortable, in fact, that the Conservative Political Action Conference, or CPAC, has taken its show on the road. The gathering frequented by many of the GOP's leading fringe voices is underway right now in Hungary. To be clear, this is the American CPAC. This is not some Hungarian spinoff. Hungary is led by right-wing autocrat Viktor Orban. The prime minister and his party have steered the country in a frightening and extreme direction. He's installed a fascist, white nationalist government that bears only a feigned resemblance to democracy. The guy has gotten so good at bending the election rules that his party got 53% of the vote in the last election, but got 83% of the districts. And most alarming, Orban has endorsed the racist replacement theory that is said to have inspired the tragic shooting in Buffalo, among other mass shootings. It's hard to tell whether American conservatives are trying to learn from Orban or the other way around. Joining me now is Mark McKinnon. He's a former advisor to pre-authoritarian Republican figures like Senator John McCain and President George W. Bush. He's also the creator and the co-host of The Circus on Showtime. Mark, yesterday at CPAC, Viktor Orban told the crowd that it was time to, quote, take back the institutions in Washington and Brussels. We must find allies in one another and coordinate the movements of our troops. That's some pretty explicit language, including, in my opinion, the mobilization of white supremacist foot soldiers internationally. What do you make of American conservatives leaning into authoritarian figures like Viktor Orban, who seems to be setting the table for even more extreme ideology? Well, hi, Katie. It's, it's shocking to me, uh, given that, uh, you know, I, I lived in a, and worked in a world of Republican politics where you know, the most contrary thing you could do was to sidle up to any foreign autocrats. And 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 now, uh, as you pointed out in your intro there, not, not only are, are we, is the Republican Party talking about Viktor Orban, they're talking with him in Hungary, uh, not in the shadows, not in closed meetings, but out in the open. I mean, I could imagine some scenario where somebody like Paul Manafort might be having secret phone calls with Viktor Orban, but to, to be openly meeting and hosting a conference and bragging about it uh, tells us what the intent of the Republican Party is, which is to move further and further away from uh, democratic ideals, uh, which, which is just, it's just, it's very hard for me to believe, even harder to stomach. And then we look at Pennsylvania and the election there, and it's, it's very significant to me uh, and, and in some ways hopeful because I think that the election of Doug Monstrion is the most significant outcome of the elections this week. A lot happened, but Pennsylvania elected the most Trumpian, the most anti-democratic candidate. Uh, this is a guy who was at the Capitol, who's been spreading the big lie and ran on the big lie. 
but the good news, I think, for those who, are, who defend and promote democracy is that this race is going to now be all about that, uh, because the Democratic nominee, Josh Shapiro, also ran on, uh, on the big lie, against the big lie, uh, rather than for it. So this will be a stark contrast, and I think that Doug Mastriano uh, really represents the worst of, uh, of Republican politics and where it's headed right now, the worst possible nominee, and a lot of Republicans, even Trumpy Republicans, think that he's a liability, and he would be, because if he's elected, he appoints the Secretary of State, who, as you know, uh, has everything to do with calling the election. So this is all about 2024, even uh, as Viktor Orban, you know, the autocrat in Hungary, is rallying the troops for our election here in 2024. Yeah, Mark, I want to quickly go back to a point that you made about there's no secret backdoor dealing kind of Manafort style things that are going on, because you and I both know there were no consequences for those secret backdoor dealings. In fact, because of the Trump pardons, because of this tone that was set by the Trump administration, things like that can now occur in public. You've been in this space for a long time, Mark. Has the GOP party just fallen off the cliff and are they just done? And is there any way to be able to get them back to what it used Used to look like maybe that Reagan or even McCain GOP party that you knew well. I keep hoping for that, uh, but you know we see, the party seems to have clawed its way to the very bottom. And, and I think the problem is, as you pointed out, is that there simply are no consequences for this anti-democratic behavior. In fact, just the opposite. There are rewards, and people are copying and emulating the president who started the Stop the Steal movement by saying before the election that if he lost, it would be a fraud. Um, and by continuing to trumpet that lie, uh, which now, you know, more than a majority of the Republican Party believes, despite any evidence, zero evidence to support it. Uh, so, it, 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 listen, there are, there are people like me who really feel like an island, that there's no Republican Party that looks anything like what uh, I supported in the past, and it's very hard for me to imagine supporting in the future. Here's another he alarming headline out of CPAC. Matt Schlapp, who I know that you know well, the head of CPAC, floated ending abortion in America as a solution to the racist great replacement theory fanned by many of the conference attendees. Schlapp said, if you're worried about this quote unquote replacement, why don't we start there? Start with allowing our own people to live. Mark, I got to get your reaction to that. It's, it hasn't really been a lot in the media, but I'm sure it's got to give you some concern that the head of CPAC is out there saying that the Great Replacement Theory actually works, especially if you end abortion rights in America. Wow, that's it. I, it it's, <laughs> I have few words, really, except that to say that, you know, they're in Hungary where the sort of, the, you know, Viktor Orban's been talking about the replacement theory uh, from the very beginning, and it's been kind of a feedback loop with Tucker Carlson, who's talked about it 400 times on his show. Now Matt Schlapp has taken it to another level by tying it to the abortion uh, laws uh, uh, in America now the, the, that we've seen in the last uh, couple of months, and we'll see with the Supreme Court decision. Uh, what strikes me is is so hip hypocritical and ironic about the replacement theory notion is that if you have a party that you believe in their policies and the ideals, why are you afraid of new people? Why do you assume that new people in the country will vote for the other party? Mm -hmm. If you're such a great party that represents something beyond just white evangelical Christians, why not welcome others and, and why not have enough belief in what you believe in to believe that others will support you. I mean, they're just making an assumption that new people who come to America won't support Republicans, and that, I think, says a lot. Yeah, we've seen that floating around on social media, the idea that if you're a minority, if they're treating so well, then why be worried about being the minority if you're the conservatives? Very quickly, Mark, I have less than a minute left. I do want to ask you the following. On top of the circus, you also co-founded a group in 2010 called No Labels, which promotes bipartisan problem solving. I, I got to ask you the frank question before you go. Does No Labels, that group, does it still have a place in today's political world? Very steep hill, very big rock, um, but there, you know, it's a it's a flicker of a candle in a very dark cell. I'm a prisoner of hope, so I continue to believe. I mean, they still got you know 40 or so members of Congress, half Democrats, half Republicans. 
that are a, an important swing voting block uh, on, on, you know, when you can't put together any Republicans and Democrats on any issue. So I think they can continue to be a force despite and in, in part because of the partisan times that we're in. Mark McKinnon, thank you for your insight and for your time today. I appreciate you being here. Kick it. Thanks.